Hi, uh, it's Sunday, uh, except I'm in New York City. This is normally the time when I start to think about what will I write for you for the newsletter? What's the important themes? And I think it's been very clear to me over the last two and a half weeks. Um, we've received a few awards and I'm in New York City for the International Press Freedom Awards. Uh, the Committee to Protect Journalists, they're giving me the Gwen Eiffel Award on Tuesday night. Uh, but the reason why I wanted to take you with me into Grand Central Station is because this is one of my favorite spots in the city. I think it's gorgeous, historical, and I think this is the time when we need to look to history to learn some lessons about power structures, the role of journalists, the role of civic society, and the disruptor in all of this of technology. Now, we're just I'm just walking into the main part and I want to show it to you because it's really, really super. Uh, I love this space and, um, you know, let me show you what it looks like because I hope you'll enjoy it as much as I have every time I go through here. This is Grand Central Station. Um, they've maintained it over the years. Uh, I'm like actually a friend, Joyce, Joyce Barnathan was just pointing to me that unlike say the, the Penn Station, uh, which then became Madison Square Garden, this one is history, right? You're living through it. Anyway, I think I have just two key messages for this newsletter. Um, message number one is we are at the dawn of a new age. I always use the phrase creative destruction, but maybe more important is, you know, not just from Rappler's perspective, we are in crisis. The world of journalism is in crisis. Uh, the global world of journalism is in crisis. And global geopolitical power structures are disintegrating and evolving because all of these things are coming in place. And the biggest disruptor is technology. And uh, in almost every speech that I've given uh, in the last two and a half weeks, I pointed out that we at Rappler, the journalists based in the Philippines, are actually fighting impunity on two fronts. Front number one is the government, which, you know, if you read the papers, you know now that the Department of Justice has announced that it plans to uh, indict both Rappler, me, and our accountant for tax evasion. And, you know, I've run out of synonyms for the word ludicrous and ridiculous, uh, laughable, another one, because the way that they got to these eva tax evasion charges is by classifying our company as a dealer in securities, right? Like, we sell stocks and bonds. We don't. Um, it's an investment vehicle, the Philippine Depository Receipts, and as an investment vehicle, we declared it. We declared it publicly, we declared it to the SEC, we declared it to the BIR. Uh, and as our lawyer, Francis Lim, has pointed out, he is the former president of the Philippine Stock Exchange, you know, not only is there no legal basis for this, but it is also, if pushed um, to court, could rock financial markets because Rappler, Little Rappler, is not the only company that has issued Philippine depository receipts. In fact, you know, you have your two top television networks have them, the telecommunications companies have them, um, lots of others. So there are repercussions to this. So why are these cases filed against us? Because we continue doing the stories, and there are in particular two stories that made us the target of attacks. The drug war, which any self-respecting news group in the Philippines is covering, but we are covering it in depth with an impunity series. Our most recent seven-part series actually talked to killers who admitted that they had been uh, told, given names, and paid to kill these people by the police. And then the second impunity is against an American social media platform, um, actually all the social media platforms are Americans, right? the ones in the Philippines, right? But in particular, I always single out Facebook, which is a frenemy to us. It is the reason why Rappler grew, we're partners, we're alpha partners, but at the same time, 
that's also where all the exponential lies, the attacks against Rappler have happened. And I have appealed repeatedly over the last two and a half years. Remember, we came out with our weaponization of the internet series almost two and a half years ago. That is, we started gathering that data then. So now the rest of the world is feeling it. And uh, what you're seeing, I think this is the last point I want to make, is that globalization is not just economic, it is information. And you know that old saying, information is power. Facebook is a platform that now unites 2.3 billion people all across the world. Nation states, the boundaries of nation states, they don't exist. Lies from one country spreads to another just as easily. And when President Trump calls CNN and New York Times fake news, a week later, President Duterte calls Rappler fake news. Um, we're all connected, and the solution the solution comes from all of us. This is another one of those moments, just like in World War II, when the people who have power, the new power, algorithms and technology, need to actually get together with governments, governments who may or may not want to control them, uh, civic society, journalists. Uh, We've seen an example of this in Paris at the Paris Peace Forum. I'm part of a, of a group that uh, it's the Information and Democracy Commission, 25 people from 18 different countries, including some of the smartest people, uh, Nobel Prize laureates, uh, academics, lawyers, journalists. We're trying to come up with, and this is the word that I think we're looking for, values, principles. What are those universal values that will determine who we are, how we can use the internet for humanity. I'm sorry to end on such a huge note, but I need to end. Um, I wanted to say, have, I hope you had a good weekend, and uh, I'll see you soon. Thanks.